Is filmmaking an addiction? Is filmmaking an addiction? Oh, that's a tough one. I couldn't do anything else. I, I, I feel like, if, you know, like if I ever, when I hear people retiring, I'm like, I've never retired. I'm just going to make films until I can't. <laughs> until they stop. I think it's a privilege. So it's less addiction for me and it's more privilege. And I don't, every time I make a film, I don't want that privilege taken away. So I'm super grateful that I get to make movies. And th think about it. Like, hey, everybody, come into my brain. People are going to give me millions of dollars or a million dollars or many millions. They're going to give me all these talented people. And what I have in my brain, I get to show to a bunch of millions of people. So it's like, it's a privilege to get that. And, and, and I, I, I feel that way every day. Uh, it's not an addiction, but it's something I would never not do. How's that? <laughs> How do you know you wouldn't be? I mean, I know you said you worked at a used clothing store when you were like this new waiver. That sounds <laughs> a rock stupid. star would be okay. another thing I'd like to okay. be. Okay, because but that, David that, that's much more about <laughs> your own fulfillment. Because I mean, you know, you see a rock star on the stage and oh yeah, and all these women. And, yeah. and that'd be great, but I don't think I would be still alive if I did that. And uh, I think I, I think honestly, music could give a lot to people. But sure, um, I, I, there's something about filmmaking that just sits well with me. It's like, it's very, it takes a lot of thought and premeditation, a lot of layers to it. And, and um, I, the other thing I do for fun is I DJ. Uh, and I think the reason I do that is because film's so premeditated. And the other two things I do is DJ and cook. They're both like riding, cooking's like riding a wave. You have to do it at the moment. You know, it's not premeditated as much. And, and DJing is like immediate reaction. You play music, people respond, you react to them. Um, I find it fascinating. I went to go see the movie Time Code a few years back by Mike Figgis. And it was this brilliant idea he had that there would be four screens and all the actors had a, literally a watch with Time Code. And he choreographed almost like a live play um, where everybody had to do a certain thing at a certain time. And it was a, a fictional story he created with you know drama and arguments. And I can't remember if it was shootings or anything. Um, like Salma Hayek was in, a bunch of great actors. And... Uh, they probably did a number, I think he said they did 13 or 14 takes because it was one take when you finally saw the movie and everything was choreographed that like somebody would leave that room and end up on the street and all the cameras are in different places. And I thought, well, that's fascinating. And then I, when I went to see it, Mike Figgis, um, I said the New Art Theater here in, in LA, uh, Mike Figgis actually live mixed um, the four stories and he said it for him it was fascinating because normally the movie went out without a mix and and he would raise and lower different stories but by actually being in the theater depending on how he felt the audience was responding he would raise the volume more he would kind of guide the people a little bit to where they were going and i just thought that's such a cool element to add to filmmaking if there's a way to make it like interactive for the director that you can change it um uh, I, I don't know. It just was a fascinating thing because, again, movies are so premeditated. You sort of do it and then you put it out there and that's it. Um, I do find TV is something I want to do because I um, went to school with Vince Gilligan at NYU and he created one of the best TV shows, I think, Breaking Bad. And when I started hearing him talk about it, um, Jesse Pinkman, who ends up being kind of the main, sort of the co-main character and eventually becomes sort of the moral point of view of the audience he was supposed to die in I think the first season or halfway through the first and I, I think it's fascinating that in TV that you you have this living thing that you're like oh people are liking Jesse and and, and they start to even see between them the the creative people seeing what's working and the audience responding it becomes its own thing and I I'm fascinated that my next step is to get involved in in cable TV, I always go like, where did all the edgy 70s movies go? And I go, they went to cable. <laughs> there are TV now. Um, so that's that's an exciting thing, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting, gauging the audience's reception, because I've been in some movies as, as an audience member where I'm the only one laughing, and it's a little bit disconcerting, because then mm -hmm. I think, well, I guess I have to kind of tone it down. <laughs> and then I, when I went to see the Mike, Mike Wallace documentary, and most people there were probably... 20 years older than myself, and they were loving it. Uh -huh. And then I felt free. I could like laugh and, and but then you, I went to see Vice and no one was, you know, it was total silence. Total and it, silence. sometimes it depends on the area yeah. that you see the film. Oh, definitely the area. Even the time. 
Oh, that's true. <laughs> when you're, when you're, because I want pop my head in theater sometimes. And do you? Like, yeah, and then we also do previews of our movies a lot. And, and uh, yeah, a late audience, if they're drunk, it's one thing. <laughs> <laughs> but different regions will react differently. Different economic levels yes. will laugh at different things for Definitely. sure. Um, it, yeah, so it is interesting when you're making a movie because you can't make everybody happy. Um, but I guess you got to make sure you make yourself happy and then hopefully you get a lot of people in there with you. <laughs> True, and one I saw in the suburbs and the other one I saw in more of a city-like city, yeah, yeah. area. And yeah. so there was a difference in reaction. And it's interesting to see, too, who claps after movies as well. Yeah, I, I got to say that one one of the greatest, greatest feelings, not as much as being a rock star and going, <laughs> but I, I will sneak into a theater and, and see how my movie's doing in the real world. And like you premiere, obviously people are going to clap because they know you're there. But I've had, I've watched my movie play and people applaud. And it's such a great feeling because you're like, are they paid to see my movie and they're applauding? <laughs> so that, that fulfillment is, is, it makes it all worthwhile. It makes all the hassle and all the hard stuff that goes along with filmmaking so worthwhile. Was it this is, an industry town where you saw this? Uh, Were I've they clapped? It. Um, different places. Oh, um, wow. I've done it, uh, but it was definitely regular people. Well, it wasn't know. just people in the industry. Oh, no, no. It was like people on a Saturday afternoon oh, nice. that went to see my, you know, I think it happened with um, Around the World in 80 Days for sure, uh, Click for sure. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Very it's cool. fun. You do all that work, you kind of want to pop your head in now and then and see how it's playing. Right, and not have it where they're performing for the director. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a right. true test. It's scary. Very cool. <laughs> and sometimes you're like, why didn't they laugh at that joke? They laughed at the previews. <laughs> you're writing stuff down. Like, who's this guy in the back writing everything down? <laughs> who's that jerk? <laughs>